exposure to historical archives instilled in Hank Willis Thomas the notion of repurposing vintage text. Thomas debuts two exhibitions at SCAD Museum of Art, Blind Memory, a historic exploration of the museum complex, and Freedom Isn't Always Beautiful, work that investigates spectatorship and complicity. Hank Willis Thomas, thank you so much for being here for Define Art. Thanks, it's a major honor. Could you talk about this entire exhibition, Freedom Isn't Always Beautiful? I did a series in 2009 called 1969, where I took headlines and taglines from Ebony and Jet magazines and mixed them with other images I found in the magazines. And the idea of freedom, I started to think about this text that I found in a different context, that freedom, uh, we think of it as this heaven, this haven, this beautiful mm -hmm. thing, but maybe uh, it's actually more of the struggle. I'm still thinking about tomorrow, connecting it today and to the past also. Yeah. Maybe um, you would like to talk a little bit about this series. So this series of paintings is inspired by the photograph by Ernest Withers of sanitation workers marching in Memphis, Tennessee in 1968, holding signs that read, I am a man. And uh, when I made this work in 2009, I kind of found it astounding that it was necessary for people to stand collectively to affirm their humanity. and. I realized that it went from a collective statement under segregation to seeming like an individualized statement after integration, because the phrase I grew up with wasn't I am a man, it was I am the man. The man, yeah. So the first line is a timeline kind of way. Think about when the United States uh, Constitution was written, African Americans were counted as three-fifths of a person. But uh, the last line, I'm the man, who's the man, you the man, what a man, I am man, I'm human, I am many, I am, am I, I am, I am, I am a man. And I realize like the greatest gift that any of us are given is our consciousness. And that just by being able to say I am, we can do so much. Much of your work is text-based and you've also used um, some interesting technology in this exhibition. Having grown up in a research library because my mother's a curator and art historian. I've just always been really inspired to make art as a response to things I find in the archive and text is you know, really valuable, especially thinking about popular culture text that's mm -hmm. thrown away. Bringing it into the art context puts it into the historical record. Kind of using advertising as a base, something that everyone sees, but maybe they don't think about. Yeah, advertising is the most powerful language in the world because it literally shapes the way that we see ourselves and the world. And I think it's important to have a critical look at the things that affect our notions of ourselves and other people. All things being equal. So where did that idea come from? So as you look around, I think almost all of the text work is something that I lifted from different magazines. And so the way the text is laid out, there's this suggestion that it's kind of, there's more to say. And I think you could also make a real analogy for sports and politics. A lot of the major accomplishments for civil liberties and for humanity happened actually in the American context through sports. You know, whether it be uh, Jim Thorpe or Jack Johnson or Jackie Robinson, there are so many cases in where sports was a, a, an opportunity for people to be seen more and more as human beings. We're fortunate enough to have two exhibitions by you. Blind Memory, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's an installation that I created with the SCAD team. As I learned about the history of the building and I saw the train tracks on the road, and I decided that it'd be interesting to think about the major commodities of this region. So we got tons of cotton, literally, and tobacco and we got rice and we're filling another one with indigo. It's more of a gesture and a reminder. Do you think it's the artist imperative today to speak through art about important social matters? Well, I think the artist imperative is to try to stay true to themselves. And most of us are not really speaking about today or the past, we're really speaking about tomorrow, which is why so much art is not understood in the contemporary context. And so the, the diversity of methods of working is really important. And I think for my own self, I'm really inspired by James Baldwin, who said the artists struggle for their integrity should be 
seen as a metaphor for the struggle for everyone to become a human being. So I see my our practice as me in this practice of trying to become a better person. Thank you so much for this exhibition. It's important work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.